Big Town. Extra, extra hero all about the double murder. Tonight's Big Town story, Extra, Extra. Presents Big Town. The headline stories of a great city dramatically reported by Steve Wilson, fighting managing editor whose creed, as with all great newsmen, is emblazoned on the masthead of the Illustrated Press. The power and the freedom of the press is a flaming sword, that it may be a faithful servant of all the people, use it justly, hold it high, guard it well. Now, Big Town, and tonight's headline story captioned... Double murder. Few men are capable of murdering a woman. And if the attempt fails, the would-be killer must strike again. And such is the background of Steve Wilson's strange case of double murder, which began some months ago near Gangland's conventional burial ground and abandoned coal dock on the big town waterfront. All right, Dick. Get her out of the back of the car. Hey, why don't you drive us right into the drink and be done with it? I know what I'm doing. Drag her out of there and I'll make sure that chain don't come loose and let her float up into the city more. Yeah, 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 okay. But I don't like the idea of cooling dames. Nobody gets off of a big tag for killing a dame. Put her down on the edge and quit jittering. I don't like it either, but orders are orders. How come Anders made you do it, Artie? I thought you were soft than a canary. Who says I did? Okay, then Anders. But I thought he never... Quit thinking, Dink. Quit talking about her. She was a good kid, but she knew what happened to that narcotic fed. Okay, okay. Let's get it done with and get out of here. Okay. This canvas will hold. The chain will keep her on the bottom till it won't matter. Where'd you get that chain, Artie? Off of the gate of Mickey Martin's casino on the River Road. Creeps. That'll tie this to him if the cops drag her up out of the drink. That's the big idea. Come on, grab hold. Creeps. She ain't very heavy. Shut even with up, the... Dink. Heave. Creeps, Artie. I... I need a drink. Shut up. Let's get out of here. a minute? Sure thing, Lorelei, my lovely. Come in. I want you to listen to something that may be right up your alley. Uh, come in, Miss Mills. Thank you, Miss Tilbury. Steve, this is Cora Mills. She's from upstate. How do you do, Miss Mills? How do you do, Mr. Wilson? She's here in Big Town looking for her sister. She's disappeared, Mr. Wilson. I haven't heard from her in two weeks. Well, perhaps she just hasn't written. No, there's something wrong, I'm sure. I phoned the rooming house where she was supposed to be staying. The landlady said she'd never been there. What was she doing in Big Town? She hoped to get a job singing. Singing? Yes, she sang in one of our local nightclubs upstate. I see. Did she ever write you? Mention any contact she'd made? Only one person. Someone by the name of Tyler, a talent agent. He was going to get her a job. Tyler. Ever heard of him, Lorna? Yeah, Steve. He's a crummy 20 percenter in the old Big Town building. I went there this afternoon and his secretary said he'd never had anyone named Clara Mills on his talent list. Sounds like a cover-up. Have you contacted the missing persons bureau, Miss Mills? No, sir, not yet. I checked the bureau, the hospitals, and the morgue, Steve. Nothing. I came to the Illustrated Press because I've heard you help people like me, Mr. Wilson. I hoped you'd run a story. Perhaps even... Even print a picture. Well, we'll do anything we can, Miss Mills. Have you a photo of your sister? Yes. Here it is, Mr. Wilson. Well, this will help. We can print it, but first... Wait a minute, Miss Mills. This is a photograph of you. No, I'm Cora Mills. That's Clara. We're twins, Mr. Wilson. Identical twins. Good grief. That changes things. If anything has happened to your sister, those responsible may know you're looking for her by now. How about that landlady, Steve? She must be lying. Go see her, Lorelei. Put the pressure on. Uh-huh. Size her up for a sign of a payoff to keep her mouth shut. I think she has been paid, and it'll be a pleasure. Well, take Harry the hack along. Landladies who can be bought may be rough and tough. Okay, Steve, are you going to call on Tyler the talent toad? Yes. Let me go with you, Mr. Wilson. No, Miss Mills, I want you to stay right here in my office. But why, Mr. Wilson? Well, this doesn't sound like any penny any cover-up, Miss Mills. 
And if anything really serious has happened to your twin sister, those responsible are liable to start thinking they're seeing a ghost. Ghost? Then you think Clara's been murdered? Well, I'm sorry, Miss Mills. It would be folly and dangerous to you to overlook that tragic possibility. I don't care about myself, Mr. Wilson. Clara was so different from me in everything but looks. Talented, wild, headstrong. But I loved her. And I'll do anything to find those who've hurt her. Maybe even killed her. I know you will, and you may have the chance, Miss Mills. But I want you to stay right here at the Illustrated Press until Miss Kilburn and I can find out if your sister is alive or dead. Vic Anders. Vic, it's me, Tyler. I've been trying to reach you all afternoon. Yeah, I'll bet. I've been busy. Remember that Clara Mills canary I sent you? You never sent me nobody, you percentage punk. Yeah, I know. That's what you told me to say. But a dame come in this afternoon while I was out of my office. What happened? My gal said I'd never handle that dame. You dope, if anybody asked, they must have known you did handle her. But there ain't nothing here in my office to prove it. No records, no pictures of the dame. Nothing but you. I won't talk. I'll keep clammed, Vic. You can trust me. I'm gonna make sure. Want for me to get out of town for a while? Yeah. Stay in your office. I'm sending Artie over after you. Artie? Yeah, but relax. You're just going on a little trip. Stay put or we'll find you and you will go for a long ride. And is lying. You don't trust me. He's going to shut me up like he did that Mills dame. i got to get out of here before... Artie. Hello, Tyler. You going away? No, I... What's the idea of crashing my private office? Well, the outer door to your so-called reception room was open. Who's the Artie character you're expecting? None of your business. I ain't booking no axe. Beat it. I'm not selling an act, Tyler. What do you want? I want a straight answer to a simple question. Name it. Where is Clara Mills? Clara Mills? Uh, uh, who's she... Never heard of a canary by that name. You're a rotten liar, Tyler. I'm not you lying. You tripped yourself in your first lie. I didn't say Clara Mills was a singer. I, I just guessed. Well, then guess what's going to happen to you if you keep on lying to cover whatever's happened to that girl. Let go. I don't know what happened to her. Stop I... lying, Tyler. This smells like murder. How do you know I'm lying? It's written all over you. I walk in here and find you waiting for someone called Artie. You're getting ready to run... And when I opened that door, you sounded like you expected the kiss of death. Who... Who are you? A copper? Oh, but thanks for the compliment. I'm Steve Wilson of the press. Oh, a newspaper guy. Yes. And if you don't talk to me, you'll talk to the police. If your friend Artie doesn't get here first... Oh, no. no, Let me go. I don't dare talk. Don't be a fool, Tyler. It's obvious you're marked for a ride or a rub-out. Whether you talk or not... Let me go, Wilson. I gotta get out of here. They're coming after me any time now. Wilson... Somebody just come in the outer office. Is there another way out of this office? No. Get out of sight. If they find me talking to a newspaper guy, they'll blast me, sure. All right. I'll get against the wall behind the door when it opens, but cross me up and you'll be signing your own death warrant. Okay, Tyler. Come on, let's go. Don't walk out there, Tyler. Try to get him in here. Uh, Wait a minute. I'm packing a few things. Oh, yeah? Come on, Tyler. You're traveling light. All right, but... But I gotta take a few uh, papers. Get away from that desk. Like nothing I. Like nothing I will. Yeah, that's right. Like nothing you will. So long. Tyler, where'd he hit you? In the. in the throat. Listen, Wilson. Lie still. He's gone. Where's your phone? Behind you. On the windowsill. Listen. Oh, wait a minute. He got you in the throat. You need a doctor? Quick. No. Now, listen. He got me twice. Where else? Here. Over the heart. Homicide. This is Steve Wilson. Will you ask Inspector Callahan to come to room 210, old Big Town building, and order an ambulance for a gunshot case? Okay, Mr. Wilson. Can you hold on? Wilson. Listen. Yes, just a minute, officer. What are you trying to say, Tyler? Uh, Here. uh, Write it on this piece of paper. Don't try to talk. uh, Good grief. What happened, Mr. Wilson? I haven't located Inspector Callahan yet. All right. When you do, tell him, never mind the ambulance. Just bring a basket. Tag for the morgue. The 
Thus, death has wiped out one lead in the riddle of the missing girl. But for the tense and exciting developments, we'll return to Steve Wilson and Big Town in a moment. Now, back to Big Town at Steve Wilson's headline story of Double Murder. Tracing a young girl whose twin sister has appealed to the Illustrated Press for help, Steve Wilson located a shady talent agent who apparently booked the missing girl into some big town nightclub. But the agent was murdered before he could talk. Meanwhile, following another lead, Lorelai Kilborn and Harry the Hack approach a cheap rooming house near the theater section of Big Town. This is the roach roost, Miss Kilburn. Oh, thanks, Harry. You wait in your hack while I quiz this landlady with a conveniently forgetful memory. Well, Miss Kilburn, did the boss not explicitly state that I was to stick to you in the event of eventualities requiring some flexing and unflexing of muscle, which I am very good at? Yes, but I'm going to question the lady on her own doorstep, and if I need you, I'll call for reinforcements. Okay, and uh, speaking of the lady, hmm? there is a somewhat of Wadupwadis Amazon oogling us through the curtains of the ground floor front. Thanks, Harry. That may be a good sign. Wait here. Hey, watch her, Miss Kilpin. She's waddling to the door. That suits me. Oh, she's an eager beaver. No need to ring. Uh, good evening. What do you want? I might want to rent a room. I'm full up. No vacancies, dearie. Expect any? No. Who said I might and who sent you? A girl who had a room here a couple of weeks ago. What girl? Clara Mills. You're a liar. No Mills gal ever stayed here. What's the gag? You know the dame that phoned yesterday? Said she was a sister from out of town? No, I'm just a friend of the family. Well, beat it. No Mills dame ever rented the room in my place. She got herself in a jam with no skin off of my neck. What makes you think Clara Mills might be in a jam? Out of town dames are always coming to big town and getting themselves in jams. And the same goes for women who run boarding houses and let their tenants vanish and lie about it when they're questioned. Who are you calling a liar? Who are you? Them flap in the missing person's office? No, but if you don't answer my questions, they'll be around and you'll do your talking at headquarters. What's this dame pulled? How come the heat's on? What heat? I mean, how come you and the sister's looking for her? There's a fair chance she's been murdered. Murdered? Yes. And now before you do any more lying, think over the consequences of being an accessory to a murder against whatever you were paid to keep your mouth shut. You're crazy. I don't know nothing. We know she roomed here. She wrote her sister. She was lying. I ain't had a vacancy in a month. How much are they paying you to say that? Nothing, and you can't prove a thing. Oh, so you removed her clothes and her luggage. They've really got you up to your neck in criminal conspiracy. I ain't talking. You can't trick me into admitting nothing. You've been tricked. Who shut your mouth with money or threats? Nobody. Where did Clara Mills get a job? I don't know. If you don't tell us, we'll get it out of her agent. What agent? Tyler. A talent toad in the old Big Town building. Never heard of him. Don't know nothing. Get out. Beat it. Let me alone. What's the matter, Miss Kilbane? Uh, don't the lady want to buy no subscription to help you work your way through college? No, Harry. She's trying to work her way into woman's prison for the rest of her unnatural life. Uh, she shall live so long. What do you mean by that crack, Hacky? Uh, if you will observe carefully, madam... There is a gent meandering up and down across the street who is very interested in our little tete a And uh, he is manicuring his mitts with a toad sticker, which might likewise be used for <coughs> cutting throats. Yours, for instance. You don't scare me. I don't know nothing, and I ain't talking. All right, but if you live long enough to change your mind, call Steve Wilson at the Illustrated Press. Well, don't hold your breath. <coughs> Sorry, Miss Kilbine. Did I do wrong button in? Oh, I don't know, Harry. Is that man across the street really watching this house? Yeah, and he ain't thinking of buying it. Good. I think he'll follow me. Hey, now, wait a minute, Miss Kilpine. The boss I'll walk said... down to the corner drugstore and phone Steve. And whilst while I'll be doing what? Drive around the block and come up the avenue. If he follows me when I leave the drugstore, I'll shake him in the arcade building. And then? You get on his tail and stay with him until he lights. Okay, Miss Kilpine. You sure you can shake him? I'll shake him. And if he comes back here to take this stupid landlady on a little trip... Call Steve at the office right away. Oh, Mr. Wilson, did you get any information about my sister from that talent agent? Please sit down, Miss Mills. What's happened to Clara? What did that talent agent tell you? Not a thing. Nothing? He was about to leave town when I got to his office. He was too frightened to talk, and before I could get him out of there, he was shot. Killed? Yes, murdered by a gunsel who simply opened the door of Tyler's office and shot him down. Oh, how horrible. But 
Must that mean my sister Clara is really dead? Well, I'm sorry, Miss Mills, but my experience, even Gangland rarely commits murder. Except to cover a murder. But why would they kill Clara? She was wild and headstrong, but she never did anything wrong in her life. She was never mixed up in anything crooked. Yes, but some of the nightclubs in this town have a silent partnership with the so-called underworld, Miss Mills. They're fronts for all kinds of rackets. And if your sister got a job in one, she may have been a, a witness to something that would require her silence. And gangland can be sure of only one kind of silence, Miss Mills. I'm sorry. I hope I'm wrong. Poor Clara. She came here with such high hopes. Yes, and we can only hope the deadly pattern won't be repeated. Steve, Macy said you just came in to get anything out of Tyler. No, they got to him before I could make him talk, Lorelai. What about the landlady? She won't talk, but she's being watched. You better get Callahan to take her into protective custody, but quick. Did you get anything, Lorelai? That depends on Harry. Well, what happened? Harry spotted a plant watching that landlady's place. I pulled him off with a fast stroll up the avenue, shook him in the arcade building, and Harry took him from there. Nice going, my lovely. Let's hope Harry can stay with him. I've yet to meet the character who can shake Harry, except you. That's only because I know how he operates. Oh, that might be Harry's Let's Steve. hope so. Hello, Steve Wilson, press. Uh, boss, it's me, Harry. You heard from Miss Kilbine? Well, she's right here in the office, Harry. What did she get? Plenty of plenty, boss. That creep tailor Miss Kilbine till she shook him like a daisy. Was so bind, he never knew I was practically breathing down his neck while he homed like a pigeon to a hook and rook roost fronted by a con character named Vic Anders. Vic Anders Lucky Club. The same, boss. And as you know, it has a somewhat aromatic rep as a front for the sniff and dip trade. Yes, where are you phoning from, Harry? And Amici sweat box on the corner. You coming down for a look, see? I'll be there in ten minutes. Keep away from that place, Harry. They're playing this game for keeps. Mr. Wilson, let me go with you. Maybe there's some hope. Maybe Clara's still there, still alive. Oh, Miss Mills, it would be too risky. There's something queer about this, something that doesn't quite gel. I had the same feeling, Steve, talking to that landlady. This isn't a simple matter of murder and cover-up. I can't believe Clara's really dead. I'm afraid, but until I really know... Wait a minute, Miss Mills. There's a slim chance. You're the image of your sister. If you suddenly appeared in Anders' lucky club and was mistaken for her, we might trick them into a false move. I could go with her, Steve. You could get Callahan to cover the place with his homicide squad. Phone him at Tyler's office, Lorelei. Ask him to throw a net around the lucky club on the double. Well, what are you going to do? I'm going to pay a call on Vic Anders. I want to be in his office when you and Miss Mills, doubling as her sister, enter the club and his goon boys tell him Clara Mills is very much alive. <laughs> Thus, Steve Wilson gets set for a quick showdown with those who hold the secret of Clara Mills' fate. In a moment, we'll come to the exciting climax of tonight's story. Now, back to Big Town for the five-star payoff in tonight's story of Double Murder. Investigating the disappearance of a nightclub singer, Steve Wilson has traced her to a clip joint known as the Big Town Lucky Club. And now, having arranged a simple trap and informed Inspector Callahan of homicide of his plan, Steve enters the private office of Vic Anders, owner of the club. Hello, Anders. Wilson, what's the idea of barging into my private office? Call it bad manners, if you like. But I wanted to surprise you. Nobody surprises me, Wilson. My doorman phoned me the minute you walked into my club. Yes, I was sure he would. And he's going to have more news for you before this night is over. What are you after, you nosy newsy? The joints on the up and up? Yes. You boys usually keep your fronts clean. It's what goes on behind the scenes. You're really profitable enterprises. Name one you can pin on me, Wilson. I'm not here to talk about rackets tonight, Anders. No? Well, what do you want? Let's talk about a frightened landlady on South Street, a dead booking agent called Tyler, and a missing girl by the name of Clara Mills. All right, Anders. What about them? You're doing the talking, Wilson. You all tell right. me. All right, I'll tell you. It's all washed up, except for one thing. The landlady is in protective custody. The dragnet is out for your gun boy, Artie, because he made the stupid mistake of killing Tyler while I was in his office. No goon by the name of Artie works for me. All right. So far, we haven't tied him to you. But the Mills girl is another matter. No dame by the name of Mills ever worked for me, neither. And you'll never prove that she did. Oh, no? Suppose she put the finger on you, told why she had to disappear, why her landlady had to be bought off, why a broken-down booking agent had to be killed. 
She won't. Well, answer your phone, Anders. It might be very important. Not to you. Yeah? Boss. Boss, it's me. Think. I I just seen a ghost walk into the club. What's that? That, that, that dame Artie fixed for you. The one we had... Shut up, you stupid. What happened? That dame just walked into the club with the cookie ice spotted quiz and her landlady on South Street. What do I do? Keep an eye on them till I get what gives. Now what, Sanders? Stay put, Wilson. A gun won't get you out of this, Anders. Oh, we'll see. Artie, come in here. So there is an Artie. Yeah, Vic? Artie, I've been hearing things. Yeah, so have I. That door's kind of thin. This newspaper slug here says he can put the finger on you for killing a dope named Tyler. Yeah, but I don't think he's going to do that. It's too late for gunplay, Artie. Wait a minute, Artie. Wilson will keep. You and me got something to settle first. All right, but keep your gun on Wilson, not on me. Tink just phoned. He says there's a dame down in the club that oughtn't to be anywhere except... Dink's crazy. He knows where she went. He helped me put her there. But Dink says she's downstairs, and Wilson says she's ready to put the finger on me. How do you explain that? All right, so they found her. So I'll tell you something, Vic. Make it good, Artie. Make it awful good. I told you I didn't go for killing Dane. I gave you an order, you punk. That ties you in, Anders. I am up, Wilson. Anything you hear now ain't gonna do you any good. All right, Artie. How did you fool Dink? What did you take down and drop in the river? <laughs> A roll of canvas and a chain for weight. What did you do with the dame? I made a deal with her and her landlady to keep the trap shut. Keep out of sight till I could get her out of town. Yeah, and the leather sick the cops on me for shooting that narcotic fed. Narcotic? So that's what's back of this. Yeah, but you won't make a headline out of it, Wilson. All right, Artie, go ahead. Wilson's your meat. He's got the finger on you for Tyler. Go on, he's no dame. You don't have to be squeamish about him. Don't be a fool, Artie. Empty your gun into me and Anders will empty his into you. Yeah, I know, but like Vic said, you'll keep. Drop your gun, Vic. Drop it on the floor. Like the dame. Uh. All right, Artie. That saved the state the expense of one killer's trial. Now let's have that gun for evidence. Sure, Wilson. Come and get it. One slug at a time. No. Can't you count, Artie? Five shots. You spent them all on Anders. Oh, yeah. Yes. Ah. Now, leave that empty gun on the floor, Artie. Where is Clara Mills? Did you really have a soft enough streak in your rotten nature to spare that girl? Hey, boss, are you okay? What goes? You got all that lead. I'm okay, Harry. What's this rat? With pleasure. What happened up here in the shooting gallery? Who's the somewhat dead-looking pigeon on the floor? Vic Anders, it was the old story, dog eats dog, Harry. But that isn't the best part of this payoff. Steve, Steve. Come in, Lala. I've got a job for you that may mean good news for Cora Mills. I know, Steve. Callahan's men found her sister locked in the attic room of that boarding house when they took the landlady into protective custody. Holy moly, whom would they need to protect that bad lax from? Well, it doesn't matter now, Harry. Where's Callahan, Lala? Rounding up the rats in this dive. He must have heard those shots and is on his way up. Good. Borrow Anders' phone and call Fletch on the city desk. Byline yourself a story of a murderous cover-up that failed. So ended happily for Cora Mills and her missing sister, and with the subsequent arrest, conviction, and execution of the murderous Artie, Still another exciting assignment in the newspaper career of Steve Wilson and the Lorelei of the Big Town Illustrated Press. Next week, a heartwarming story of devotion and sacrifice captioned The Angel of the Street. Another exciting assignment in the newspaper career of fighting Steve Wilson of Big Town. Don't miss it. In tonight's dramatization, all names, times, and places are fictional, and any similarity to other names and places is purely coincidental. Big Town features Edward Pauley as Steve Wilson, Fran Carlin as Lorelai Kilborn, and was written and directed by Jerry McGill. And now, Big Town bids you good night until next Tuesday night, same time, same station, when you'll hear the newsboy calling. Extra, extra, he all about it. The story of Steve Wilson and Angel of the Street. Extra. 
Strong X, Strong. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.